welcome to episode 34 of Little Bobbin's Nook. Oh, bless you, baby. My name is Danny, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Little Bobbins. We have a Ravelry group, which you can find by searching Little Bobbins Knits in the Groups tab on Ravelry. And show notes for the podcast can be found at littlebobbins.co.uk. Oh, has got the sneezes. Oh. You've got the sneezes. Oh. Um... So thank you so much for being here today and thank you so, so much for the lovely messages that you sent last week. I really, really appreciated that. It's lovely to hear from you always, but I really appreciated those messages. Um, so, uh, today I've got some works in progress to show you, some finished objects, some spinning and some lovely things. And a sleepy little bobby. Are you so sleepy? Oh, come here. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's a dead weight because he's so tired. He's such a monkey. So I thought I would bring this out to show you again because I've knit a couple more squares on them, on it, and I'm having a bit of a time where I'm feeling like I have too many projects going. So I don't think this will see any work. For a little while so I thought I'd just show you the ones that I added before putting it away for a bit but to show you I have to find them don't I I think I added this one that one is from the knitting goddess I'm in their mini skein club I never show them on the podcast because I'm never sure if other people are in it and I don't want to spoil the surprise if they haven't got theirs when I've got mine so yeah I never show those but I'm sort of showing them now they're in the blanket I also added that one that was one of the Knitting Goddess mini schemes and I added these two they're from Carrie there's the Carrie Crafts podcast this one's Koi Goo. I just love Koi Goo. It's so lovely. And this one I think was Lydia's Knits. And I just think it's so pretty. I added a square from my tweed socks. And this one is from Kim. With Squimbalina. I love that one. It's the Countess of Blaze one. And this is one of the, the Little Prince colourways. Um, I have that whole collection in my stash and I stole a little mini skein out of each of them. I think I've only knit up one pair of socks from that yarn so far. Um, this one is from Lena and it's got gold Stellina running through it. It's lovely. And I think that's all I added. Yeah. So just a few more. But I thought before I completely forget which ones I put on, I'd show you. And I've decided to go for the bigger size. I thought about two different sizes that I might do. One um, 12 by 16 and one 14 by 18. And I think I'm going to go for the 14 by 18. But it's getting lovely to have on my lap while I work on it. Or if it was cold, it would be lovelier. <laughs> But it's quite warm, so it really does keep me warm. It's a very, very rainy, sort of drizzly day outside today. It's the perfect sort of day to work on something like that, but I mustn't. I really want to get some other things finished first. Um, my second work in progress in my little clear chicken boots bag which is a lovely gift and my misty alpaca socks I'm so enjoying these these are so fun I love how they're knitting up but the yarn is just so soft it's it's soft and squishy and it's the softest sock yarn I've ever used definitely So, are you having a good chew of your foot there, Bobby? 
Thank you. Such a monkey. I popped a contrasting heel in these. I think this was a mini skein from The Wool Barn and I think it's merino cashmere nylon because it's very very soft but I thought that lovely forest green colour went really well with the colours in the sock and Oki Lynn asked in the thread about when I put my contrast heel in and I thought I would explain it on here instead of writing it down because when I write things it gets much more confusing <laughs> than when I say them, hopefully. So, there's no um, logic really necessarily to when I add in my heel. I tend to, I've got 64 stitch socks, so I knit the first 32 stitches and then I start using the contrast on the other 32 stitches and I am using a slip stitch heel here so I've just knit one slip one all the way along and you can see where the stitches are slightly bigger and I use them as a sort of guide so I can remember how many um, slipped rows that I've done and so yeah I'll do my little square of slip stitches along there and then my heel turn and I, I'm using the square heel pretty much exclusively now because it's so easy to memorise. You just separate your heel into blocks of the same amount. Well, into... Mine is a 32 stitch, so I'll knit across 11, then I'll knit another 10, slip slip knit, and then you turn round, knit 10, pull two together. And it's just so easy, you just go back and forth knitting 10 and purling 10 and decreasing at each side. It's such an easy one. I do find with this sort of wedge style heel, I've gone completely off on a tangent, I know that, sorry about that. But I find with the wedge style heel, I can never remember how many I knit along and then how many I have to knit back again to get that sort of wedge shape. I find this so easy to remember and... I really like the fit of the heel. It's a really comfortable one that your heel just sort of pops back into and it's really nice and cosy around your foot. So anyway, and then when I finish that heel turn, I'll cut my yarn and the yarn will be here then. So I'll just go and pick up those stitches all the way around and carry on knitting my silk. So, I think it looks fine. So there's the little heel turn. I know you were saying something about it being symmetrical, Lynn, but I don't... I haven't counted my rows. One of them sides might have one more row than the other, but it's never been noticeable or an issue. So, yeah, that's how I do my contrast heel so I hope that helps a little bit but I really love these socks I love how it's just like one line of stripe and the colours in this are just so pretty they do remind me of a little cottage garden so that's one sock and I've got the other one to about the same stage because I knit them at the same time so I'll knit the cuff, then the cuff, then the leg, then the leg, then the heel, then the heel, and then start doing the foot. And as much as I'm loving these, and I really, really am, I really want to cast on some more socks. I don't know what it is at the moment, but I'm just really, really loving just plain socks. I always have a pair on the needles, but at the moment I'm just finding them extremely enjoyable. So yes, that's those. So I'm very much enjoying those. And she doesn't know it yet, but I think these are going to be for my mum. Because she has been dropping some serious hints about how much she loves this yarn. So I 
think they might have to be for her. Just gonna have a sip of my tea. Just got some peppermint tea today. My next work in progress <laughs> is it better thing? in my lovely bag from Isabel. It was Fluffy Fibres and has the Fluffy Fibres podcast, which is a wonderful, wonderful podcast. I've got my Come What May shawl by Susan B. Anderson. It's this lovely, pretty shawl. And I've gone off on a bit of a bead frenzy, you might call it. I watched, I've never knit with beads before, I was a bit intimidated by knitting, I was a bit intimidated of, no oh, I can't work out to make that sentence sound right, I was intimidated by working with beads and then a couple of weeks ago, last week or the week before, uh, Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast and Villa Vine Yarns released her beading tutorial and it is so fantastic. If you have any reservations about knitting with beads, you have to watch that tutorial because it demystifies it completely and makes it so approachable and simple. She just did a wonderful, wonderful tutorial. But because of that tutorial and because of how fun it looked, I've started adding beads where beads aren't supposed to be added or aren't written <laughs> in to be added. I don't know if you'll be able to see them. They're a lovely sort of mauve matte, slightly iridescent bead. I don't think you'll be able to see them. I've put a photo on Instagram. I'm not sure if you can even see them on there. They do blend in quite a bit but sort of when you do see them they add a really nice detail and I sort of feel like they just add texture as opposed to sparkle which I quite like really um, but I'm enjoying this shawl so much and I'm enjoying using beads so much I can see that it could be addictive I've got my beads in ooh, no. got my beads in my little tin that came with my Rocky Horror Show kit from Fondant Fiber See if I can show you them without throwing them all over the room. See them? They're sort of a iridescent -y mauve, but matte. I really, really like those. I got them from Bead Stampede. I found it really quite difficult to find a good bead stockist. I've got a couple of links now, I'll put them in the show notes in case you're looking for beads as well. Thank you for those, Pink Perla. But yeah, I'm really enjoying beads. I've got my teeny weeny crochet hook that I had. I don't know why I would have bought such a tiny crochet hook, but I had this in my little collection of needles and hooks. And yeah, I'm just sort of working around it now. I'm on the stocking stitch section. I'm probably going to run out of beads because I bought how many you needed for the pattern as written and I'm adding beads willy-nilly. So it's not actually willy-nilly. I've marked my chart and they're all at quite regular intervals. But I'm just having so much fun with it. It is so, so enjoyable to do. And I'm really enjoying this pattern. I can't wait to see it blocked. Doesn't it look <sighs> lace? Oh, it just looks so untidy until you block it, doesn't it? So yeah, I can't wait to bring this to life with blocking. Um, oh, I'm knitting my socks on my high high sharps, which are my favourite DPNs. They're lovely and light and really slick and have lovely points. And I'm knitting this shawl on higher, higher sharps, fixed circulars. These are 4mm, I think. Yeah. And 
I just love these needles. I do use other needles sometimes, but these will always be my favourite because they're so light and smooth and just lovely. And for lace, these sharp tips are really, really good. The yarn I'm using is Kettle Yarn Company, Islington. It's 55% British Superwash Blueface Leicester and 45% silk. 100% British wool, which is nice. Really enjoying that yarn, it's lovely. And that's another reason I thought that I would do the matte beads, because the yarn's got a shine to it. So I thought it might be quite a nice contrast. Yeah, I'm just enjoying that project such a lot. Very fun indeed. So that's that one. And my last work in progress in my perfect for today umbrellas bag from Fondant Fibre is what I'm knitting for the Purposeful Stash Along. And I'm so enjoying seeing everyone's projects for the Purposeful Stash Along. It's just brilliant and all the chat in the chat thread is wonderful. So thank you so much for joining in. I need to get in there and start chatting. But my mind has been all over the place. So house stuff is still ongoing and driving me slowly around the bend. So... <laughs> <laughs> I've been a bit absent, but it's been lovely to see everyone chatting there. So I'm knitting the Newsom, which is a cardigan, mitered cardigan by Bristol Ivy. I hope you can see that. I know someone else is knitting this cardigan in the knit along, which is really exciting. I'm knitting it on my High High Sharps interchangeables. These are 375 millimeter. I haven't quite got the right gauge, so I'm just hoping for the best. I was going to knit the smaller one, but I'm only t a tiny bit off in my gauge, so I've decided to knit the size that I plan to knit. So I am this far into it. This is the back, the bottom bit at the back. So yeah, it's a bottom up cardigan. And I'm really, really enjoying it. It's really simple to knit at the moment. I love how the yarn is knitting up. I love, one of the reasons that I wanted to use this tweedy yarn is because I love how tweed yarn looks in stocking stitch and garter stitch. And you get both in this cardigan, which I really, really like. I think this would be a lovely cardigan for hand spun as well because of that. I really like how different the arm um, look in, excuse my hiccup, in stocking stitch and garter stitch. So yeah, I'm just really liking this. Got my little moomin on there. That's sort of there so I can kind of count my rows, but that only works if you remember how many rows were up to the moon in, so I don't. Never mind, I'll just have to count them again. Um, I'm using Rowan Felted Tweed. Oh. Which is really nice. It's a merino, alpaca and viscose yarn. I'm really enjoying it. I'm able to do felted joins with this because the yarn isn't super wash. So this is my second ball. I've joined in another ball. And I love the felted join because it's just completely invisible. Um, yeah, really, really great. So I just love this. It's such a fun... I really enjoy patterns that have got a fun construction you kind of don't know what's going to happen next 
well, I don't know what's going to happen next because I haven't read ahead in the pattern. But I really enjoy that sort of exploration of a pattern. It's really fun, not just your sort of standard pattern that you can anticipate what's going to happen next. So yeah, it's lovely, really, really enjoyable. I hope that this bit, when I block it, doesn't curl because that will annoy me. I hope it doesn't. But I'll just have to give it a really, really stern blocking. Hopefully it won't. So yes, enjoying that a lot. Semi anxious about how it's going to come out, what size it's going to decide to be, but it'll be fine. So that's all my works in progress. Now I've been very, very inspired by everyone's Instagram posts about the Tour de Fleece. It completely passed me by this year. I think I took part last year, but I've just... I just completely forgot that it was happening this year. And I haven't really been in the mood for spinning, so I didn't... I wasn't taking part. But then all of these inspiring pictures on Instagram... Oh, they completely got me. So I've been doing a bit of spinning. I finished this braid. This was a Felt Studio UK braid. I'd already spun half and then I spun the other half last week. And it's superwash merino and nylon and it's got a lot of sparkle in there. You won't be able to see it on the camera, I can't imagine. But I didn't love spinning this. I think I prefer my spinning fibre to be woollier and this felt just a bit too far on the synthetic side for me. It's going to be socks and I was going to do a three ply but because of the really nylon-y feel I thought I'm not sure that I need that extra ply. It might come back and bite me, I don't know, but um, I just did a two ply in the end. I think I got 360 metres, so I'm going to knit socks and I'll probably use a contrast heel just because I always tend to. And I'm in intrigued to see how it knits up. When I first finished it, I thought I don't really like that. But now that I come back to it, it's not as horrible as I thought it was. I just thought it was a bit stiff and a bit synthetic and a bit not wool has got life to it I think it's it's just a completely different thing to spin whereas this feels a bit oh, I don't know how to explain it it's just not not as lovely as wool but I think it will make an interesting pair of socks the colours got quite mixed up because I wasn't doing any sort of colour management there's pink, yellow, a bright green, a sort of golden yellow, and blue. So, yes. Looking at it again today, because I put it away straight away after I'd finished it, because I just wasn't happy with it. But I, and I got it out again today, so it's sort of a week later or something. I'm so much more okay with it that I think I might quite like to cast it on soon actually see what it's like hmm. so yes there's that I have got another braid of this fiber and this is just a prime example of why you should just buy one thing at a time Jack Neal uh, but I don't I see something and I assume that I'm going to love it so I buy it in bulk I don't think two braids can be classed as bulk but yes I have another braid and we'll see I really wanted that to be socks as well. That's a gorgeous black and purple and white that I think will be really interesting to spin, but I just didn't really enjoy the fibre, so we'll see. But yeah, that's.
that's one braid done. And then I wanted just a really quick and fun project to put on my spinning wheel. And I was going for something with maximum barber poling and thicker than I usually would do. Because this is probably my default, this sort of way. But I wanted to do a thicker braid. So I put this um, braid on, which was from Spin City UK, it's a dolly mixture. And I'm not entirely sure what fibres are in here because it didn't say it on the label, but I think there's merino, soy silk, there's some sparkle, and I think there might be some fin sheep from a farm local to her. Um, I think. But I'm not sure. I know I'll be able to find it on her um, shop page, so I'm going to go and have a look there so that I know what's in it. But I spun this in a couple of hours and then plied it the next day. I always do try and leave it to rest overnight. But I'm really pleased with this. This is exactly what I wanted at the time. I just wanted something fun, quick and with all the barber polling. I don't know what this will be, but I think it will be something in something to colour. I think that would be quite good. But yeah, it was a very enjoyable spin. It's so nice just to throw something on the wheel without any plans for what it will become. Just enjoy the colours running through your hands and the feel of the different fibres. I really enjoyed that. So yes, that is my spinning. The posts for the Tour de Fleece have just been so inspiring and has made me want to get even more on the wheel, so hopefully I will. And um, Kristen from the Algasm podcast, again, is doing a spin for socks, spin along, and knit along. I really would like to join in with that. I think that would be really fun. I don't think this will count because I spun one of the bobbins ages ago. So I'll have to have a look through my stash and see if I can find anything else that's suitable for socks that's a different fibre. So, that's my spinning. On to my finished objects. I finished my Tweedy socks. And I love these. Oh, my hair is on everything today. I'm so pleased with how these have come out. They're just such lovely socks. Such lovely yarn. And I've just remembered I forgot to draw for the competition. So I think I'll pause it and do that in a minute because there's some chatter in there so it might be quite a long-winded process if I try and do it all on live. So yes, these are my tweed socks. I did them top down. I quite like a sort of reasonably deep rib. I think this is about 15 or 20 rows and that's what I usually do. And then I did a slip stitch heel, which is just my favourite at the moment. This is in some yarn that I got in a mini skein swap with Robin, half past 92, who has the Stitching Between Pages podcast. I did the square heel that I love so much. And I was knitting these at the cinema. I knit too far. Usually I do a wedge toe, but I knit too far. I knew at the time that I was knitting too far but I just kept knitting. I don't know why. But I used a star toe. I think that's what it's called. I'm not entirely sure. Where you decrease at more points and it makes a sort of rounded toe and then you have the six stitches that you, I think it's six, that you then gather up instead of kitchenering them together. That's a much shorter toe than the wedge toe. So I was able to just put that in 
and I didn't have to rip back at all, which I was pleased about. Um, I don't tend to use that toe at all, but I do like the look of it. It's nice and rounded. So, yes, really pleased with these socks. I love the yarn and I love how that contrast heel goes with them. Uh, Kelly Jo Girl asked in the What Do You Want To See On The Podcast thread about my sock blockers. These are from Loop in London and I think they're called Bry Spun or something like that and they're fantastic sock blockers. I used to have some plastic ones which I really liked but I put them on the radiator and they warped as they would being plastic on heat. But um, these ones, they help your socks dry really quickly because there's hardly any thing in the way. The plastic ones I had were sort of quite thick. And you can put these on the radiator and they don't warp. <laughs> and I really like how they look in photos as well. Because I only block my socks the first time I wash them. Because I like... If I'm giving them as a gift, I want them to look as pristine as they can. And when I'm photographing them, I like them to look really nice. So I'll block them that first time, and then every time I wash them after that, I won't block them. I'll just hang them over the dryer. But yeah, these are really, really great sock blockers. I'm pleased that I got those ones. So I hope that helps you, Kelly Jo Girl. My second finished object, last finished object, smells like celebration soak. Oh, there's Bobbin. Bobbin, do you want to come up here for a little treat? So you don't do barking. What do you think? Do come up on your stairs? Oh, you're so clever. He's completely got the hang of his stairs now. He's so cute. He's so nice. Good boy. You like these little treats, don't you? Good boy. Give me for a little cuddle. Oh, such a baby. Um, Mum and I were shopping the other day in Marlow, and we went to Bobbin's favourite shop, didn't we, Bobbin? His dog shop, where they just sell things for dogs. And when I carry Bobbin around, I carry him like this. And two people said, you're carrying that dog like a child. I just thought, well, how else am I going to carry him? I can't stick him under my arm like he's luggage. That wouldn't be very nice, would it? Seems like the most logical way to hold him. But yes, people just don't understand how little bobbins have to be treated, do they? <laughs> and they feel like they have to share their opinions which I just find really strange to a stranger. It annoyed me, as you might have been able to tell. <laughs> You're such a good boy. Anyway, so my Pebble Beach is finished. I knit the Pebble Beach in some The Uncommon Thread, Heavenly Lace, in the Salty Air colourway. Heavenly Lace is a blend of alpaca and cashmere, and I think there's some silk in there. It's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. Really, really lovely. And I have been sort of putting off blocking this because I thought I wouldn't have any space to do it. But as it turned out, my blocking mats were sufficient and I got it blocked on there. Good boy, baby. And it is just so beautiful. Blocking is magic, isn't it? It was such a crumpled up little heap of knitting for, at first, but now it's just gorgeous. I'm absolutely thrilled with it. And I must say, it. I was a bit... Um, I enjoyed the process, but I was just amazed at how slow I was at knitting with lace weight. But I have to say, it's completely worth it. You get such a lovely fabric. It's light, it's sort of gauzy and airy, drapes just beautifully. It's, this has completely changed my mind about lace weight. 
I can see me knitting more lace weight things because this is just, the fabric on this is just so gorgeous. So it is quite large. I think, oh, Robin, it's all right. I think it's longer than my wingspan. And I'm not entirely sure how tall I am because I can't honestly remember the last time it mattered. I think I'm five foot two or five foot three. And, oh, yeah, it's longer than me. <laughs> you good boy. But yeah, I am just absolutely thrilled with this. I don't tend to wear shawls as shawls. Oh, but isn't it a lovely size? Oh, I'm just so over the moon with this. I completely love it so much more than I even thought I would, and I thought I would love it how much those stitches have opened up. Can you see better? Because it's dark. The background's darker. Oh, I'm in love with this. The more I look at it, the more I'm in love with it. I'd probably wear it like this though, which is probably a terrible thing, but just like a scarf. Because it scrunches up so lovely. You lose the pattern though, don't you? So that might be just a terrible thing to do. But it's so light and just thin. I love it. Absolutely love it. Is that the front? That's the back you're seeing now. That's the front. I love the different um, concentrations of eyelets. Then when they get all lined up down at the bottom and that beautiful pico edge. Just over the moon with this. This is the Pebble Beach by Helen Stewart. There are three different sizes of Pebble Beach now, as I'm sure you know. And this is the large lace weight size. Oh, just over the moon with this. Absolutely over the moon. And I love the yarn because it's got sort of... Um, you can see different tones in there if you're looking at it in the flesh. So to speak. It's just beautiful. Ooh. Do you know, I didn't know how much I loved this until I properly looked at it. I've just been so in intent on getting it blocked and getting it done that I haven't really taken time to appreciate how pretty it is. But I just love it. I love that lightness. I bet it'd be really warm as well. Because those little lace holes grab the hot air don't they that might be a complete that might be something that I've completely made up but I always imagine that the little holes grab onto the hotness and keep you nice and warm that is quite possibly something that I've completely made up and just been telling myself for years who knows so yes love 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 that I'm going to have to start looking for another lace weight shawl, I think, because that is just beautiful. Look at those eyelids. Gorgeous. So there are all my finished objects. I'm very, very pleased with both of them, actually. So on to lovely things. I received the most fragrant package of all packages, um, I can't remember if it was this week or, no, last week or the week before because time is just playing games with me at the moment. But Laura from The Corner of Knit and Tea, which is a lovely podcast, I really enjoy Laura's podcast, and she has been one of the very, very inspiring people in Tour de Fleece. Her spinning is beautiful anyway, but she has just been a spinning machine lately. So, yeah, for the tour, she's been very, very inspiring indeed. And she sent me some of her favourite colourways of Vormizer. So, these are all to knit in my blanket, which I'm really, really excited about. That's a gorgeous colour actually. And I really like this one. Oh, I think that's my favourite. It's 
called Young Mouse. So yes, they're very exciting. I really wanted to knit them in straight away, but I thought I'd wait. And also, because the colours are sort of semi-solid, some of them may get stolen to use for heels and toes. Or just heels. I don't tend to do the toes, I don't know why. But I just like doing the heels. So yes. Thank you for those, Laura. And what made the package just so incredibly fragrant incredibly fragrant is she sent me all these different types of tea there's some oh this smells so good there's some republic of tea david's tea which is something we can't get over here um some from laura's local tea store which is birthday tea that sounds so good and capital teas almond cream biscotti oh, sounds so nice and i don't know which one smells I think it's the combination of all of them. They just smell completely heavenly. If I didn't want to drink these so much, they would get made into little scent sachets for my knitting bags. The smell is just incredible. They've been in my bag with um, all of my lovely things ready to show you. I'm getting them out today. The smell just hit me. It's so gorgeous. I'm just going to scroll them away in there so they can make my cardigan smell nice <laughs> they are just I haven't tried any yet because I wanted to keep them all to show but um and I kind of don't want to use them because they smell so good but I'm really looking forward to trying them as well so thank you so much Laura my peppermint tea seems so bland now <laughs> I got another lovely package from a very kind person and I squealed when I opened this. It's a zombie bag. Oh, this is just, this couldn't be more perfect for me if it tried. <laughs> it's zombies and I love zombies. I don't know why, I just love zombies. They really scare me in a good way. And this polka dot lining. Oh, it's just beautiful. So this was sent to me by Sam, who is Betsy Makes. And Sam has a lovely blog, which I would really recommend you go and have a look at. She's got crochet and knitting and beautiful photography. And she's got some crochet patterns as well, actually. And a couple of them are ones that I have been looking at on Ravelry and thinking, oh, I'd really like to make those. The little snow tip set, really lovely. So, yes, she sent me this fantastic bag, which is just, the fabric is perfect. So, so perfect. <laughs> she sent lovely yummy treats for Bobbin and I. A lovely note, and this gorgeous key ring. Isn't that lovely? So beautiful, it's crochet. It's so lovely. And I think I'm going to save this. And when we get our new house keys, I'm going to put this on it. I think that would be really lovely. But I want to keep it all nice and pristine so that I can put it on the new house keys. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So, yes, thank you so much for those, Sam. They're just... They're so lovely. Ooh. I need to get a project in this. I'm so... Yeah, need to start using that, definitely. Thank you so much. So, I have also bought some things. I fell off the No Buying Things wagon slightly. On the weekend before last, David and I went to went for a little drive with Bobbin. Didn't we, Bobbin? You came along too. Oh. And we went to Surrey. And in Surrey, there is the Fluffatorium in Dorking in Surrey. 
and I've never been there before so we thought we'd go and have a look and I found this fantastic braid well not braid but um roving I guess it would be called wool tops I have no idea what the difference between roving and tops is just so you know so if I use those terms wrongly it's because I have no idea what either of them mean um but I just love I loved all the colours in this. There's loads of sparkle. I love that blue and the hot pink. It's a blend of different merinos, uh, different colours of merino, and then that sparkle. But I really want this to be socks for um, Kristen's sock spin along. But that will be a stupid idea because it's merino it will felt on my feet I imagine look at those colours there that orange but I can't get that thought out of my mind I suppose I could just make it into some house socks or something I don't know but I think they would be the funnest socks ever so yes the Fluffatorium was a nice shop, it was um, had lots of kits for felting and other things. I wasn't um, drawn to any of the yarn necessarily, but I really loved that top that I bought. And yeah, there were some other really lovely things. It was like a little Aladdin's cave, it was full to the brim with all kinds of things which is exciting I'm glad we went over to have a look at it it was nice that they let bobbin go in as well I also got some washi tape and I can't remember where I've put that it's nice washi tape with um, some dogs playing with balls on there so I have an unhealthy obsession with washi tape And I've also been buying yarn. The last couple of weeks things with the house looked like they weren't happening and I was getting really stressed and now it sort of looks like it's happening again but I just don't want to get my hopes up so I don't even know. But having that sort of uncertainty meant that I was just in a buying frenzy quite frankly. So I got this skein from Felt Fusion. This is just so fun and I noticed that I bought all sort of cheerful yarns as well. I love these colours, it's orange and pink, turquoise, sort of lovely lime green and this is called Scoobies and this was a custom dye that my friend Amanda, who is Knitting Mummy, requested from Felt Fusion and it was based on a Buffy comic so when I saw it in there I had to get it Amanda has been knitting some socks with these and they just look so nice, I think she's got it on the sparkle though but they look so lovely, as soon as I saw that it was in the shop I thought, I have to get it I love Felt Fusion yarn, I think they're, it's a really nice yarn I really like these colours. So I'm very pleased to have that. And then I got this lovely yarn. This is from London House Yarns and they're a brand new shop on Etsy. And this is the Weather the Weather set. And I wish I could show you what it looks like knit up because it's fantastic. It's a self-striping, superwash wool and nylon, 75-25, it's lovely and soft, but it's striped so that you get a thick-ish stripe of blue that looks like uh, a blue sky with clouds, and then you get all of these different rainbow colours in sort of a short, thin stripe, and then you get a grey stripe for grey skies. It looks fantastic and I just couldn't resist it. It's really, really lovely. So I'm very excited to knit that. And 
it also comes with a little stitch marker on each skein which shows you where to start if you want to get identical socks which I think is very clever indeed so yes very pleased with this just love it I, I just want to cast on all the socks at the moment so yes that's very lovely and I also bought this which I wanted for ages but because I was trying to be good I didn't buy it it's from Bear and Vula, which I'm guessing is how you pronounce it, but I'd love to know if I'm pronouncing it wrong, Vicky. Vicky JB is on Instagram. It's dangerous following her. Seriously, she is posting all of these colourways that she's coming up with and when she's dying and oh, just want it all. I really, really enjoy her yarns. Um, and I needed to get this skein of Pond. I saw Vicky knitting up these socks quite a while ago and I just knew that I needed needed a skein. This is in her barefoot sock base and it's a 80% wool merino and 20% polyamide and it's very very soft, it's very lovely. I think these are going to go on the needles very soon because I, as soon as those Misty Alpaca socks are finished and that's the problem because I'm really enjoying those socks but I really want to start these. I don't want to rush through those because it's so fun but at the same time I really want to start these and I haven't got enough needles. I thought that was thunder but it might have been someone moving a bin. <laughs> so yes, really thrilled to have caught this one. And that's it, I think. Yeah, so lots and lots of lovely things. Now, as I haven't drawn for the winner or closed the thread or anything, I'm going to switch off and do that and then switch on again and tell you who won. So I'll be right back. I'm back. It worked out first um, time anyway, so I could have done it live, but never mind. So we had 236 posts but some of that was chat so um, random number generator gave me 172 who is striped daisy who is Kate and Kate would like to knit socks in the natural colour so Kate get in touch with me I think is the best way to do it and I'll put you in touch with Julie and She'll send you your yarn and find out if you still want the natural colour and if she's got it in stock and stuff. So yeah, get in touch with me and we'll get that done. So thank you so much to Julie for donating the sock yarn from her lovely shop, Suffolk Socks, which has also been very tempting lately. And yes, congratulations to Kate, Striped Daisy. We'll have another giveaway next week, I'll start another one, because we've got that lovely, happy skein of Tweety Pie, I think it's called, from Fondant Fibre. So I'll set up a thread for that and we'll start a giveaway for that next week, which I think will be nice. It's um, summery and bright and happy, so that will be fun. But anyway, that's it from me, I think. So we'll say goodbye, won't we, Bobbin? Thank you so much for coming and watching today and yeah I really appreciate you coming to watch so thank you very much. I hope you have a really lovely week and I hope to see you again in the next episode. Bye.